Hi and welcome to another very exciting quick tip tutorial. Before we get started, today we're going to talk about subclasses. Let me give you a quick update on Swift Tutorial Conference. There are already over 200 registered attendees for the conference. I just announced it last week. And if you don't know what it, this is all about, STC 16 is all about helping you adopting the newest frameworks and APIs that were introduced at WWDC 2016. So click on the link in the video description below and register. I think we're going to have a great time. It's a free online conference. So check this out and register right now. So what we're going to talk about today is a very important concept in developing for iOS and actually developing on multiple platforms. So let's have a look at what subclassing exactly is. Well, in object-oriented programming, there is the concept of inheritance. And your father, for example, um, inherited some properties, if you like to um, use terms of, prop, uh, of, of programming, um, your father inherited uh, properties from your grandfather and you yourself also inherited um, properties from your father. Um, and so you are somehow connected um, also with your grandfather. And of course, in programming, we're talking about classes in that um, in that respect. So let's switch from this uh, very basic diagram um, to something more of interest to you. So let's have a look at the Apple documentation and I've just chosen the UI text view as a simple example. So if you have a look at this, um, at, at the UI text view, the text view itself um, inherits properties and methods of course, uh, functions um, from the UI scroll view because you can scroll. But the uh, UI text view also adds additional um, and more properties and methods or functions to itself, but still using the properties and functions um, that are part of UI scroll view. Whereas the UI scroll view then again inherited a lot of stuff from UI view and the UI view from UI responder and UI responder from NS object. And this is the inheritance tree for the UI text view class. And you yourself also need to create such subclasses um, very often when developing for any Apple platform. So let's have a look at how you can actually use subclasses to uh, be more productive and also to help you understand what subclassing in an everyday um, developer's life really means. So let's fire up Xcode and let's just create a simple uh, single view application. Um, so let's choose that template. Let's call it subclassing and we'll simply put that on the desktop and create this project. Um, and even if you're not aware of that, you already got in touch with subclassing every time you created a demo application or another application um, just by using the UI view controller. Because as you can see here, when we have a look at the identity inspector, we have to find a custom class here, which is view controller. And view controller is the same class name as we have created by the single view application template here. There is a view controller.swift file. And this uh, view controller class inherits all of its properties and functions from the UI view controller class. So actually every time in view.load for example or here in did receive memory warning when we write the word super then we actually talk with the super class or the father of this class. So of our view controller class. So actually we already have a subclass of UI view controller already here. And in many cases, you need to create your own subclasses um, to get things working the way you want them to. And what we want to do now is to create a little more advanced image view. So let's um, go to our storyboard and bring up the image view from the object library and we will simply make this a very simple squared image view. So let's give it a height and width of 100 by 100 pixels. And we want to have this image view three times, something like this. And let's position the image view correctly by setting some layout constraints. I'm simply 
um, center it horizontally. I'm going to it, uh, I'm going to give it a vertical space to the top layout guide, and I'm also fix its width and height. So pretty simple layout. Same thing here: vertical spacing, vertical spacing, and also center this horizontally in container. Center this horizontally in container. And to set these constraints, I simply press Control on my keyboard, and then for example for the width constraints and height constraints, I'm dragging a dragging a line from one corner to the other and to select both properties like width and height I press shift on the keyboard and simply confirm that by pressing enter on my keyboard again so let me do that again so simply adding those two constraints and as soon as all lines turned blue um, our layout is correct and just to um, give you a quick refresh if you're not that familiar with all layout um, to set another constraint just because I did that so quickly. Um, for example, a leading space to um, to the container, you drag to the left and then you select the leading space to the container margin, which would be the space between here, somewhere here, which is the container margin and the actual position. And we have simply centered our um, image views horizontally in the container so that they're always in the center without specifying a specific um, number of pixels where our um, image view should actually be located. So with that done, we can now move on and add some images here. I've already downloaded some from the internet. You can, of course, choose whatever you want. I just named them one, two, three, and then we will drag them to the image assets folder and I will now simply copy them to the other resolutions. Of course, this is not good practice, but to keep this simple, um, I will simply uh, press Alt on my keyboard and drag that to the 2x and to the 3x version of our image. And you should, of course, provide your in your real applications the correct resolutions for all of the resolutions that need to be available like 2x and 3x now. All right, so now that we have these images here, let's simply select them here in the attributes inspector. This is going to be image one. This is going to be image two. And this is going to be image three. And so that our images do not get distorted, as you can see here, we will select all of them and um, tell them that their aspect, um, that their content mode should be aspect fill. And with that, we get undistorted images and we'll also select clip subviews here. So, all right, now we have simple image views, but our image view should be special. We want them to make a little animation when you press them. So what we can do is we can create a subclass of UI image view. And what you learn now, you can apply this to custom table view cells, custom text views, um, and so on. Um, so subclassing already existing UI kit classes um, oftentimes can be a very powerful technique. So let's press Command N and create a new Cocoa Touch class. And we're going to create a special image view. So let me just select UI image view here as a subclass, so a special image view. And as you can see, we can select different subclasses here and we also get auto completion. I could also say UI view or UI text um, field or whatever. So Xcode knows what kind of um, UI kit classes there are and what we can actually subclass. So let's select the UI image view now and click next and create this class. And with this blank slate, we can simply create a really cool um, image view subclass and give it some special features like animating when we press it, um, or also give it, uh, give it kind of a border property that we can simply set so that we can have uh, different um, kinds of colorful borders. But let's have a look at that in a moment. So first of all, um, when we want to think about how we can add something like a gesture recognizer to our image view, where is the place for that? Well, a good place for stuff like that is awake from nip. So we can first of all call super awake from nip, as you um, already know that from, uh, for example, view to load. And now we can make some adjustments here. For example, create a tap gesture recognizer. So let's create a tap gesture gesture recognizer, UI tab gesture recognizer, 
add a target, which is self, and a selector, which is empty at the moment because we have to write a function first and we will simply create that function and call this jump around something like this. And then what we can do inside the parentheses of the selector is call our special image view and jump around simply like this. And this should give us um, no errors, but um, our gesture recognizer has never been used. So we have to assign it to self. So add gesture recognizer to our image view. And we want to add the tab gesture recognizer. And since this is going to be a user interaction, we also have to go back to the storyboard for a second and enable user interaction for our image view. So let's select all of them and just check the make the check mark active here and use uh, and user interaction enabled. If we don't do that, we can't do stuff like um, using um, tab gesture recognizers or actually processing any kind of user interaction. So now that we have user interaction enabled, we can do something when we press on our image view. And what we want to do is we just want to let it jump. Um, so let's use UI view and animate with duration and an animation and completion handler. So first of all, this is going to be 0.5 seconds. The animation is simply going to be, uh, we're using our image view, so self um, dot transform, and then we will make a CG um, transform make scale and simply do that by 1.5. So just make it a little bigger. And as soon as this is completed, so in the, um, in the success closure here, uh, in the completion closure, we have to add a success um, bool as a parameter. And then what we want to do here is again, UI view, animate with duration 0.5 seconds. And the animation we are going to uh, do here is again, transform. And we will simply use the transform identity here. So once we built that, we shouldn't get any error messages and that's all right. And what we need to do now is we have created a subclass of UI image view, but our image view here on the storyboard don't know anything about this subclass and they are not in any way connected. So to make this image view a special image view, all we need to do is selecting all of them in this case, selecting the attributes inspector and as a custom class, we enter special image view. And by doing that, these are no longer um, standard UI image views. These are now special image views that are using everything that we just gave them. So let's have a look at it in the simulator. And here we go. So here are our three image views. And once I press them, all of them are able to jump around. And this is a behavior a standard image view can do. So this is pretty cool already. So now we have actually given them um, something that they can do on, re on their own. But what we also can do is we can give them additional properties. So what if we wanted to give them, uh, give this special image view the ability to have different border colors. So what we can do is defining a new property for our, um, for our special image view class. And we can also use a pretty elegant way to, um, to set and get information from our border um, color property that we are going to create here. So border color is going to be a CG color. We want to make that property optional. And by simply adding some curly braces, um, we make out of this standard property a computed property. And what we can do here is defining a getter and also a setter. And in the setter, for example, what we can do is we can already set self.layer.bottercolor and give this the new value that we have received. And as you can see, the new value is a CG color. And this is just a standard name if you don't define um, a custom name for, um, for that information. So you can always use new value in that case. And we also want to give it a standard width. So let's use border width and give this a uh, three pixel width. And then as you can see, we still have an error here because we do not have a getter yet. And what we want to return here is self.layer 
um, dot border color. So every time we access border color, we either return the current border color or we set it and we don't have to write any function for that or do anything else. So what we can do now is we can go back to our main storyboard and select one of those um, special image views just for demoing purposes. I'm selecting the first one and I'm creating an outlet for this special image view here. And uh, let me just make sure that we've selected the view controller here. And so here is my image view. I'm creating an outlet for this image view here. So let me call this special image view one. And as you can see, it is uh, this, this property um, has the type special image view, so not UI image view. And what I can do in view to load is I can now use my special image view one and access its border color. Or I should be able to. So let me just build that. So special image view one dot border color. And as you can see, it requests a CG color uh, value here. So I'm simply using UI color, let's say blue color and use the CG color value here. And once I run my application, this first special image view should have a blue color and it does indeed. So you have now seen how you can actually subclass, for example, an image view. You can do this with, um, <laughs> with every class you like. If you can't, then Apple will rec recommend that you shouldn't subclass this UI kit class or whatever. Um, but in most cases you can. So this is a great way, as you, as you have seen, to customize the behavior of some classes and it also saves tons of work. Because imagine, when you would have created three image views, uh, you would have to create three gesture recognizers for each image view in your view controller class and by uh, subclassing an image view and giving the ability to jump around and to have a gesture recognizer to the image view itself. This saves you a lot of code and it also makes um, your code a lot more efficient. And also by defining this border color um, computed property here, you have just easily set the um, the border width and also the border color in this simple setter. And it is very convenient now in the view controller class to simply set the border color of this special image view to UI color, blue color, and so on. So creating subclasses gives you an easy way to make your code more efficient, to have a more convenient life when coding. And since you will subclass something in the future, or you already did, I hope this video gave you a better understanding of what subclassing really is and what potential subclassing gives you.